<laughs> well, what a segue. <laughs> Pleased to be joined by one of the longest serving general managers in the NHL, Ken Holland, uh, generally managed the Red Wings for 22 years, now in his fourth year at the helm of the Oilers, uh, which leads to the question I've often been asked about my career. Are you closer to the end than the start? <laughs> yeah, I would say so. Yeah, yeah. I like golf, so somewhere on the back nine, deep into the back yeah. nine. And a good golfer, by the way. I golf for you this summer. You're, you're we're not, not going to ask you to submit your resignation on the air tonight, but I do want to note that uh, when you've seen me at the start of, say, the last three or four seasons, your comments always been, "Oh, you're still around. You're going to try it again, are you?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and you're still hanging in. Yeah. yeah. Let's Both get, of us are. Yeah. Yeah. Let's get to tonight's game, uh, Louis. The highlight of which was. Uh, Leon Dreisaitl's hat trick and Jack Campbell's goaltending in the first period. And clinching a playoff spot for the fourth consecutive year. What were your thoughts tonight? Obviously, it can be a tough matchup after an emotional game against the Los Angeles Kings. You come in here, and what was your thoughts on tonight? Seeing everything that happened, Leon Dreisaitl's 50th, his third 50, clinching a playoff spot, and Jack Campbell with a shutout, back-to-back -back shutouts for you. Well, first off, obviously, I was happy for Jack. I thought he was a big story for us in the first period when uh, we, we didn't, you know, coming off the, some emotional game against LA and Vegas I thought he uh, stepped up big time kept us around the game and then obviously uh, watching Leon and, and Connor you know Leon get his 50th tonight and having two guys on the same team with 50 goals I think yeah. since 95 96 yep. it showed up on the screen there uh, really really inc they're incredible players to watch and certainly our team has played at a very high level here uh, over the last little while let's yeah. get to the Oilers Ken as currently constructed you've made significant changes to the team that got to the conference final last spring I think you replaced what we can see it here seven regulars uh, would you agree that this team has Ken Holland's stamp on it well, I think it's the organization, you know, Scott, we've worked, you know, I came here four years ago and uh, you know, there's been some, some, some players that have been here under Peter Shirelli's uh, regime uh, that have had, uh, you know, Stu Skinner and uh, uh, many other, McLeod, Yamamoto, Bouchard, uh, and then and obviously Connor, Leon, there was a real nucleus here. And we've tried to, I think, uh, make the team a little bit bigger, a little bit deeper. You know, I'm, I'm, I feel good that we've got lots of 10 goal scorers or more, you know, lots of people pitching in. Obviously, we're led by Connor and Leon, uh, but we have lots of people that can pitch in. And, uh, I, you know, I thought we wanted to get bigger at the trade deadline and, and certainly adding at Coleman Bukestad, we've, we've done that. Yeah, and bigger on defense in particular, where no one's under, what, 6'2 mm -hmm. there. But let's get to some... Uh, contract negotiations live on the air, yeah. which general managers <laughs> love, Louis. <laughs> well, my take on this, though, is when you look at the core of this team, and I'm talking about the big five up front, your top two defensemen, now with Ekholm, the addition of him, and Nurse, your two goaltenders, these are all under contracts for three or more seasons. Two for Dreisaitl, I should say. So that's kind of the window with this year being the three. It's got to be a good feeling, knowing you have this nucleus under contract, and it's about putting the pieces together around it. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, when I came here, obviously, Connor and Leon were, were, were locked up for a long time. Again, kudos to uh, Peter Shirelli. And, um, you know, we, Brian Nugent Hopkins, obviously, his contract came up, and we signed him long term, Darnell Nurse long term. So, obviously, the core is tied up long term. And, uh, uh, and I like our team. We've, uh, we, we've, I, I feel that we've gotten better every year. I think we've gotten a little bit deeper. I'd like to think that the, the experience of being in the playoffs last year, actually two years ago, the Winnipeg series, I thought that even though we got swept, we played what I call playoff hockey. There were tight checking, low scoring games. We were comfortable in those games. All three of the four games went to overtime. And then last year, I, going into LA down three games to two and finding yeah. a way to win game six on the road with Darnell Nurse suspended and winning game seven, one to nothing. And, you know, it was a crazy series against uh, Calgary, but you know what I learned in my time in Detroit is you know you, you got to be in lots of those series and you need you know, lots of those experiences and hopefully one day down the road they make uh, their reason why you're the last team standing. But in, in particular for Ekholm, how important was it to have term on his contract to make that blockbuster deal? Well, before you answer that, yeah. he is clearly your most significant recent mm -hmm. upgrade. Uh, a lot of people feel that he is the best. Uh, deadline acquisition league-wide. Now, you were supposed to be in on Chikrin and, and, and Carlson. All that would have required some salary cap gymnastics. So how did it eventually come down to Ekholm? Well, I was talking to, to a number. We wanted to get a defenseman. We had our, our, our organizational meetings in uh, in January, and uh, you know our priority was we wanted to do something to defense, and ideally get a defender. Um, we felt we could score goals. We wanted to try to 
you know, bring somebody in that could have an impact on their team to cut goals against down. They talked to uh, 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 lots of teams about defensemen, and ultimately, uh, you know, David Poyle and I uh, had a conversation about a week, nine, nine ten days before the uh, the trade deadline, and we talked about Ekholm. Uh, certainly, the drafting of, of Schaefer, was, I think, was important in the deal. Certainly, he was a key piece, I think, for uh, for for Nashville. So, you know, great job by Tyler Wright, our chief scout, and uh, picking him at pick 32, and and then we just sort of pieced it together. I had to move money, obviously, by moving. Um, yes, Apuliarvi to Carolina the day before. Um, you know, I'd said we were dollar in, dollar out. So yes, he was three million. Tyson Berry was four and a half, and you know, so ultimately it, it enabled us to add Ekholm. Um, we were able to add Bukestad, and we were able to go from a 20-man roster to a 22-man roster because I thought it was be going to be important yeah. to have more bodies in the last 20 games. All right, let's have a look at exactly how you told Tyson Berry he'd been traded. Hey, Tyson. Okay. Yeah, I traded you to Nashville. Okay. So, they, uh, you know, so I, I want to thank you for everything that uh, that you've done for us. And uh, I hate these Well, then, Ken, you certainly did not that. bury the lead. So, Tyson, you've been traded. Have a good day. <laughs> no dressing it up, but I guess when you've been in this business for 26 years, there's no point in, uh, in dancing around. Yeah, I mean, what I've found for, for 26 years is the player just wants to get the bad news. You know, Tyson was very popular in the locker room. He was very important to our team. He ran the top of the power play. Um, he's been a real good player for us. He scored a huge goal. I think he scored the winning goal, didn't he, in game six, uh, mm -hmm. uh, in, in, walking yep. down the back door in, in, in L.A. To, to get us to game seven. So, you know, I, I found that through the years, anytime you're delivering bad news, they just want to hear the bad news and they don't need a long, long, long mm -hmm. chat. Alan asks, which player that you've traded, I guess at any point in your career, was the hardest to call? I, I, you know what? They're all hard to call. Yeah. They're, they're people. They've got families. Um, they've been in the locker room. You know, even when you know, I had to tell Yessa Pugliarvi he was going to Carolina. He had mm -hmm. never been traded before, and I think he was. I think even though sometimes they expect it, they're still shocked to get the news. So anytime you got to call a person, a player in, and tell them that they got to, they're leaving, they're going somewhere else. For me, is they're they're difficult because there, there's a human side. Obviously. You, yeah, they're, people, they're players, but there's a human. They've got you know wives mm -hmm. and girlfriends and kids, and they've got roots, and they've made they've made, they've set down. They've made they've made friends. And the other side of it, while you were in Detroit and while you're here in Edmonton, you're buyers. So those players don't want to leave a team that's a good team. Yes. So that yeah. makes it even more difficult. Difficult. Yeah. I mean, certainly, Tyson Berry. You know, obviously. <laughs> has been a big part of us kind of building up to where, you know, we went to the final four last year and um, obviously we've got big hopes and expectations uh, heading into this year's playoff. He wanted to be a part of it. So mm -hmm. it's, it's difficult. Let's uh, go back and uh, look at some moves you made last season. January, you sign Evander Kane. Then in February, you fire your head coach. Dave Tippett's dismissal represented the first time in your entire career that you fired a coach mid-season. Um, often, a general manager firing the, firing the coach is an easy decision to make. But again, because it was the first time in your quarter century on this job that you'd done it mid-season, were there some sleepless nights leading up to that? Yeah, there there was, and, and 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 you know, just before that, going into the break, I think we'd won. Uh, we went five zero and one in our, our previous six. We went into the break. We'd kind of played our way back into the mix, and then uh, coming out of the break, I think we had lost to uh, Vegas at home, uh, and I kind of in my mind, Chicago was a must-win game, and. We lost to Chicago at home, and and I just felt that I needed to do something yeah. to to kind of change change course. And again, Louis and I, you know, he's, I thought he and his coaching staff did a tremendous job, you know, helping build the program. But I just felt that 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 a move needed to be made. You had some great players in Detroit, but I'm sure it's fair to say you never had the unchallenged best player on the planet. Uh, so no. uh, up until the run to the conference final last year, a lot of people said and said it quite loudly, Connor McDavid is wasting the best years of his career in Edmonton. Did it bother you to hear that? Yes, sir, sir, yes and no. I would say, Scott, certainly I understood the challenge and the expectations of when, when I came here as the general manager four years ago, but 
you know, you, you can't make, wave a magic wand. At, 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 you've got to, you've got to, I think you've got to systematically build the teams. And again, I, I reflect back on my time in Detroit. You just got to keep putting yourself in position. And, and, and my, you, you got to make the playoffs every year. You know, if you want to go on a playoff mm -hmm. run, that's first order yep. business. You got to make the playoffs every year. And you got to be in multi, you got to, and then you got to try to build and you got to grow and you're going to have some disappointments. And so certainly, I, again, I, I understood that, that, uh, you know, we were coming into Connor's, or we were in Connor's prime years, but, um, you know, I feel that with the team's gotten better every year and we've tried to, uh, we're in it to try to be the best team that we can be. We go to the cap. Um, we've spent, obviously, we, sometimes we put one-way players in the minors. I've spent lots of draft picks here trying to add some pieces at, uh, you know, every trade deadline. So we're trying to be the best that we can we can be, and certainly I understand the responsibility uh, that, 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 that I've got. You you came in for your share of criticism in Detroit. That's part of the job. But I think we can fairly say that Canadian markets are more emotionally right. charged. Edmonton would be a, a good example of that. You win three or four in a row and everything's fine, but you lose three or four in a row and social media lights up, but people demanding that you be fired. <laughs> Is That's it a okay. challenge to remain oblivious <laughs> to the heat you might take in uh, in social media? And well, first platform? off, I don't really follow social media, but I'm not I'm not oblivious to know what's going on and the pressures of 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 when people are disappointed or they're 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 they're, they're not happy. But you know, I guess I go to bed every night, Scott, or, or, or feeling that I've done the very best that I can do and communicated with my people and we've we've talked about everything we've, we've got short-term plans and long-term plans I'm talking to the coach every day um, and you know you're I'm trying to do the very best that I can do well, well, on does, an everyday did, basis. Does Cindy ever say to you, Ken, I can't believe what they're saying about you? <laughs> Thank goodness she doesn't. She, early on, seven, eight years ago, she was on social media for when I was in Detroit for yeah. a, for about a month yeah. when the Red Wings were starting to... And I said, Cindy, get off there. You know, maybe she, I figured, boy, she might have a red wine one night or something. Yeah. And, 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 yeah. and Start going on there. <laughs> then, back. Yeah, yeah. And then it gets out of control. Yeah. Uh, Colin Ukrainik asks, what's the best vacuum on the market at this time? Well, my mom always told me Electrolux. <laughs> that, of course, goes back to the uh, the fact when that... When I was 29 uh, you, years old, right, and my, my mom said that I should, after my hockey career, I should get into Electrolux vacuum cleaner business because yeah. she she thought I'd be good at that job. And the Red Wings rescued you with the scouts uh, yes. job, the offer that you took them yeah. up on. So uh, the next question is from John Boy. Are the battery-operated vacuum cleaners any good? <laughs> <laughs> I just know the old-fashioned ones. Yeah. Uh, uh, but uh, I just I just know Electrolux. My mom was hammered on me on Electrolux. Okay, uh, that story about the vacuum cleaner and uh, your near miss in that uh, career is easy to find find online. We did find this online. It's the game sheet from the f your first of three NHL games, <laughs> November 16th, 1980, Hartford Whalers at MSG in New York. It was going fine until the second period when the Rangers scored four on 21 shots, and you take it from there. Well, I remember the game like it was yesterday. I played five years in the American Hockey League, and it was a Sunday night. But Saturday night, John Garrett was the number one goalie, and I was the backup. Hartford home place to Washington. We got hammered, I think, seven to three. We bust over to New York. I kind of—I was having a good year in the American League. I kind of thought I might get a chance. Uh, while I'm getting dressed, Larry Plo, the assistant coach, came in and said, "Don Blackburn wants to see." You. I went into Blackie's office, and how do you feel? You're starting tonight. My heart was pounding. The first period, I. Uh, I gave up one goal, I think, on 15 or 16 shots. I can remember sitting. Pete Peters was my goaltending teammate. <laughs> yeah. Peters, Pete was one of the best goalies in the league, so I thought I'd find yeah. So I'm sitting there in the first I've generation saying, yeah. I made it. I'm, I'm in the National yeah. Hockey League. I finally made the National Hockey League. The second period, they got five goals on 21 shots. We're down <laughs> six to one. And I remember sitting in the intermission saying, Ken, you're never going to play in the National <laughs> Hockey League ever again. So enjoy the, the, enjoy the third period. And... Uh, uh, <laughs> Here I am. Well, who was to know that uh, hockey would take you to where it has and deprive yeah. the vacuum business of a great salesman? Ken, thanks for your time. Thanks, Good to guys. have you on the program. Yeah, thanks, guys. Ken Holland, general manager of the Edmonton Oilers, was our guest. When we come back, Zach Hyman will sit in as After Hours continues.